Good morning, folks. We've got a number of stories to hit today, some observers' notes, new research groups, and more. We're starting, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com, and today is a day when we're reminded that there's more than just sunspots to watch. While the deep coronal holes are confined to the poles here, you may recall a few larger patches at low latitude about three or four days ago. The solar wind stream arrived at Earth overnight, leading density wave in orange as the elevation midday yesterday, and as it died back this morning, the faster streams of the coronal hole are arriving. It's at moderate speed, but got there quickly, and we did see a brief low-level geomagnetic storm condition from it, waning back already, and again, it was minor. Top quake of the last day, magnitude-wise, didn't hit 5.0, so the most interesting was the rumble that hit Santa's workshop up there. Folks, this is still happening too. This week, we've broken snow records from Colorado to Rochester, but right now, let's go down under to the opposite kind of weather. Major thunderstorm tore through New South Wales overnight, thousands left without power, and the wind and hail was manipulating the infrastructure in its way, and things that don't count as infrastructure. Let's jump out to Jupiter, where Juno has jacked some data jewels from the Jovian atmosphere. Turns out the water vapor is not only more abundant than what they thought, but there is no well-mixed atmosphere beneath the swirling clouds we see from above. It's as complex going down through it as we see from here. Up next, we've got a couple climate notes. One of Earth's mechanisms for counteracting rapid changes on the planet. Just like the Beaufort Gyre collects freshwater ice melt to redistribute and chill the world, the greater plant growing and greening takes a slice at climate change. By the way, their prediction is for this to kick into super gear, making for even more of a mitigating effect. Now on to more things global warming proponents don't want to hear, as just as a non-scientific study op-ed piece props up a 30 years idea of ice ages and combating climate change with iron, MIT with perfect timing sliding in to say no, no, just stop. While we're on the climate change topic, little shout out to Bill Still who featured our work on his channel. Thank you, Bill. That video is linked below and I figured I'd get something in here to give those in the climate know a little something to chuckle at up here next. Powerful red dwarf magnetic fields discovered connecting to its planets via radio signals produced by those interactions. Folks, this is a good way to recognize and better understand how the Sun and Earth are magnetically connected and constantly exchanging plasma. Even with solar particle forcing allowed into the climate change mix, it may be a minute before they take the constant plasma exchanges along the solar magnetic fields into consideration. Granted, they know that these magnetic interactions can wildly heat the exoplanets they're studying, but for climate scientists on this planet, they're just going to ignore that as long as they can. Up next, we have an explanation for why it's taken decades to get the galactic scale magnetism correct. Hard to tell who someone is if you can't see their face. Imagine trying to do it looking at one of their muscle fibers. Well, that's what we've been doing here considering that Fermi cannot see the extragalactic fields. We've long thought we had what it took to see those outer reaches, but it's just not the case. However, when we look at the larger scales, they are indeed finding that a larger scale magnetism is tied to the cosmic web. As it is feeding galaxies with plasma and electromagnetic material, of course, this would be the result of that current running through the web. Relatively basic electromagnetic science here, but at the largest scales. They're even suggesting primordial field setups may be related to this as well. Now, folks, a couple notes. I was surprised to see how many comments yesterday said things like, Wow, you're finally in contact with Randall Carlson. Well, you know that Catastrophe Cycle series I'm always talking about? And the Cosmic Disaster movie? Those things I tell you guys to watch if you haven't seen them like three or four times a week? Yeah, he's got a full episode in the series, and he made it into the movie. And we are six months past his confirmation of our attending our 2020 conference this August as a speaker. Yes, everyone, he is awesome, but that's not news to me. I've been chatting with that awesome cat for more than a year. So, who needs to go do their homework? This is real, folks. It happens in a cycle. The last one was the cycle length away, and the changes we'd expect to see on our way to the next one are already being seen. The plasma cosmology, solar forcing, electroquakes, basically all rolled into one terrible recurrent reality for our solar system, and it's linked for you below. And no, you don't get to stop doing homework because you're older, especially not here.
Anyway, speaking of homework, if you don't know, we're getting all of you involved with whatever your passion is. We are. We've got a number of groups off the ground and running already towards some goals, and today we're starting three new groups. Remember, people can only be in one group at a time, so please wait for your passion. But if that is one of these, please send us an email letting us know which of these groups you'd like to join. We greatly appreciate your support. I'll be watching that solar wind today. Hopefully some of you will be watching the catastrophe series. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.